HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Senior Center displayed some very well-crafted artwork from their various arts and crafts classes. We take a look at some photos from around Hopkinton over the past couple weeks. Water and Soar Manager Eric Carty and owner of Weston Nurseries Peter Mezzett tell you about a unique way to conserve water and Ashland Legion Baseball got a big win. But first, the newly renovated Sandy Beach opened for the 2015 summer season. Here are some scenes from the opening ceremony. Sandy Beach was packed for the season opening and annual ribbon cutting. Chair of the Parks and Recreation Commission, Bob Dubinsky explained the process and some of the new renovations at the park this year. Ready? Ready for One. Two, three. Yay! Sandy Beach! Yay. Thank you. My name is Bob Dubinsky. I'm chairman of Hopkinton Park and Rec, and we're on the uh, parcel of Sandy Beach, a project that embarked over the past four years from our department, large in part due to the credit of Ken Driscoll, our past chairman, past resident of Hopkinton, who's since moved into Boston. Ken and the Commission recognized this was a parcel that was largely undeveloped but largely used by the, the Lake community and the residents of Hopkinton. So when embarking on this four-year project, the investment came from CPC funds and from a loan from the town. To complete the first two phases or stages of this project, the third stage yet to be embarked on is the redoing of the parking lot and accommodating more cars and trailers to go ahead and enjoy this jewel of Hopkinton. Oh great, so what were the first, uh, first few stages then? First few phases were, were in part to go ahead and clear the beach of a lot of the litter and uh, unneeded vegetation. We added sand to the, to the beach area, some 30 truckloads. And then the second phase was the building that's in front of us, which is the restrooms, the showers, uh, and the storage facilities that help support our summer camps, which take place from the end of school to the middle of August. We thought that if the uh, weather was gonna be nice, we needed to accommodate a large number of people, which are regular beachgoers, with our hot dog, ice cream, and uh, refreshments. We just look forward to, uh, as a Park and Rec Commission, to continue to serve the residents of Hopkinton and to support the residents of Hopkinton with their recreation and leisure activities. Some of the new features include new playground equipment, trails, an overlook of the lake, and handicap accessibility. The playground features a volleyball court and a gaga pit, as well as a octagon-shaped dodgeball pit. Michael Moonen of Weston and Sampson talked about some of the renovations. It was mainly taking a look at the program that they wanted uh, to fit on the site and then trying to preserve as much natural resources as possible. So um, we ended up doing a, uh, a layout that um, conveyed their needs, but also disturbed as little as possible on the site. Laura Hansen of the Parks and Recreation Commission talked about planning this season's opening event for Sandy Beach. I was tasked with this event just short, under two weeks ago. So um, basically we had to do figure out something that was easy and kid friendly and considering it was the beach that the entertainment park kind of took care of itself um, but then we thought you know what's easy to serve food wise chips hot dogs ice cream truck things that are kind of you know beach fun kind of things um, so basically that just involved you know talking to the board of health and talking to um, making sure that the beach was clean and I got a lot of community help on that. Um, people came out and cleaned up the beach and the, deep, uh, the police department came and made sure everything was safe and um, basically trying to get the selectmen and the dignitaries to come for the ribbon cutting ceremony. So basically, you know, 
shopping and all that party planning stuff. We had some bumps with Board of Health and the ice cream truck, but those worked itself out. Every Everybody was really helpful and um, gave me a lot of um, assistance and advice and stuff. So, um, so yeah, all, all, all things considered, it, it went pretty smoothly. So, and we got great weather. We did have to postpone. We were gonna have it on Sunday, but that was miserable. So, this is a much better day. <laughs> and how's the turnout? Totally awesome, actually. I was expecting about 200, and it's looking like we've got about that much, maybe a few more, so. So I'm very happy with the turnout. Lots of kids, which that's what I really wanted. And what are some of the other events that Parks and Rec might be doing this summer? Well, they have concerts on the Common every Sunday, and uh, they, they're going to have movie nights. Um, I definitely advise you to look on the Hopkinton Parks and Rec website. You can get that through the town website. And there's tons of events going on on the Commons. Um, I don't know what else we have planned at Sandy Beach, but the beach is now open and staffed with lifeguards, so it's ready to go. All right, and do you need like a permit or anything to come to the beach? Yeah, uh, for Hopkinton residents, it's $30 a family and senior citizens are free for the season. For more information on Sandy Beach or anything else about Hopkinton Parks and Recreation, visit hopkintonrec.org. The Senior Center has some great art classes throughout the year. Recently, the artwork was put on display for all to view in the front lobby. Here is a look at some of the terrific work on display. The Hopkinton Senior Center has some great artwork on display. Volunteer Sally Almy told HCAM News all about it. This is an exhibit of the work that's been, been done during the past year in our four uh, arts and crafts classes. We have um, on Mondays, Tuesday, on Mondays we have a painting group that gets together and does painting in any medium. On Tuesdays we have a pottery group run by Carol McCarney, who was a teacher at the high school. She, and. Um, uh, about a dozen people participate in that and making the pottery. Then on Thursday, there's a knitting group and also a quilting group. And um, the work that's been done during the year, people been, have brought it back and just to show uh, the other people what we've done and to try to generate interest in um, joining these groups. A couple of them are suspended for the summer, but they'll be starting in the fall and the knitting and the uh, painting will go on during the summer so maybe put the thought into people's heads that uh, it's it's all happening here a lot of creativity a lot of beautiful work they can sign up at the front desk uh, there is a fee for some of the classes and not for others uh, and uh, for instance pottery is going to be uh, leap is going to be closed for the summer so they would do that in the fall that one is pretty popular too and has a limited um, limited class size because of the, the help that people need from the teacher we just have one kiln one potter's wheel and so you know don't want it to get too wieldy uh, but the painting there's no charge Monday mornings the uh, quilting it's just a dollar towards the materials and um, the knitting is free. Most of the materials are donated. A lot of people bring in their yarn and knitting needles. And a lot of the knitting is done, um, afghans and so forth. Various people do different squares. And then they put it all together and it's donated to, uh, to hospitals. Or um, uh, they've made things, I know, for the, for the troops at various times. So a lot of it's group effort. And uh, yet yeah, people can come in and work on their own individual thing. A lot has been happening around Hopkinton the past couple of weeks, and you can see pictures of everything Hopkinton on our homepage, hcam.tv. You can also see our photo collections on sceneinhopkinton.org. Here is a look at some of our most recent photos. Here are some community pictures you can currently see on our website, hcam.tv. Every second Sunday in June, the members of the Hopkinton Fire Department Celebrate Fireman Sunday. The current and retired firefighters march from fire headquarters to the memorial on Mayhew Street to remember their deceased brothers and sisters. On June 19th, Lisa Mancuso, director of social life, learns to make pasta from Golden Pond resident Reno Bacci and his wife Alma 
on the new HCAM series, The Golden Pan, which will air soon. On June 13th, Boy Scout Jordan Hanna led a group from the Hopkinton Trails Club on a trail he's developing from Abbott Farm to the trails behind Center School. On June 8th, Dave Pillarella and John Palmer prepped the bocce court at the Hopkinton Senior Center. On June 9th, despite Bus 5 on the Hopkinton Middle School trip to Washington, D.C. being slowed down by a flat tire, the students still made the best of the situation. On June 10th, Hopkinton Fires Group 2 did some training with the foam system on Engine 3. On June 11th, Hopkinton Senior Center artists, knitters, painters, potters, quilters worked hard all year and are showing some of their pieces all week at the Hopkinton Senior Center. More photos available at seeninhopkinton.org. On June 12th, Center School celebrated the USA with their annual Flag Day ceremony. You can also see more photos of the Center School Flag Day ceremony at seeninhopkinton.org. On June 11th, lifelong resident and retired Hopkinton firefighter Bill Hamilton dished out ice cream and then shared a lesson of yesteryear with a full house at the Hopkinton Senior Center. More photos of this event also available at seeninhopkinton.org. On June 11th, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito met with local government and business leaders as part of the Building Stronger Communities Tour. Lieutenant Governor Polito is the chair of the Community Compact Cabinet, which serves to strengthen partnerships in all cities and towns across the state. For everything Hopkinton, check out our website, hcam.tv, and for additional pictures, head over to seeninhopkinton.org. Coming up next on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Ashland Legion Baseball got a well-needed win, and you will hear about a unique way you can conserve water. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time, just uh, give it your ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. Rainfall has been pretty slim throughout the area in recent weeks, and conserving water has become almost crucial. Recently, water and sewer manager Eric Carty got together with Weston Nurseries owner Peter Mezzett to talk about a unique way you can conserve water and perhaps save some money. Uh, this year, uh, the Hopkins Water Department is trying to take a proactive stance in working with all of our local establishments, uh, including Western Nurseries, uh, Angels Garden, and Evergreen Garden. And in the past, uh, we're unfortunately mandated by the state to put on water use restrictions every year. And in the past, I think people might have been reluctant in order to buy new plantings if we have uh, those bans in place because they're afraid they can't water them. But we're trying to be out there uh, and help promote with these garden centers the, the proper use of how you can still buy your plantings, how you can water them properly, and actually help save water in the process. So I've met with all of the owners and they've all agreed to help out. And if anyone has uh, anything that they need to discuss or have questions, uh, along with our local garden club as well, they'd be happy to, and more than happy to discuss with you what the different options are that are available out there to help the public in order to do their plantings and in order to do them more efficiently. So this year we're trying to you know, be on the good side of things and help promote the, uh, the efficient use of aware. In the past has kind of been, there's been water bans and people think uh, we can't do that because of it. So we're, we're making a partnership out there and, and trying to be proactive. And uh, we really appreciate the help of all the uh, garden centers and nurseries that we have here in town. Well, these rain barrels are made in Hyde Park by the uh, Hyde Park Boston, by the Great American Rain Barrel Company and they come in different colors. We have grays, browns, and greens here. Uh, they're recycled olive jars, uh, olive oil jars, I believe. 
so it's a good recycled product made from a local company. They um, basically you have this contraption here that attaches to the downspout of the gutter and you can just have the water go right out the usual downspout or you can open this up so that diverts the water into the rain barrel. So that's how it works and then there's spigots top and bottom so you can um, fill up a watering can, I think halfway up rather, so fill up a watering can and on the bottom so the pressure goes right out your hose and you can water through a hose. They work great. Yeah, we, we just wanted to you know, thank Peter and Weston Nurseries uh, for partnering with us this year. Well, we've always done a rain barrel program in the past, and we thought it would be nice to do it locally and in-house with businesses now that we found out that uh, they carry them down here. Uh, so I think it will be a great thing for the residents. It you know, helps conserve water, um, which is always important to do. And having it local with uh, local businesses and local people, I think, is just a win-win for the, you know, the town and, and the businesses. So we really appreciate you yeah, helping us out. Appreciate you working with us too. It's a great thing for the town to work with the local businesses. Yeah. So thank you, Eric. And thank you. And the, uh, the residents will be able to get a, a discount? They are, yes. The okay. residents will get 15% uh, off if they bring in proof of residency, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Which is great great for them. It helps them out save as well. And yeah. uh, so it really is a, just a win-win for everybody. So we, we yeah. appreciate yeah. it. Okay, thanks again, Eric. The rain barrels can be found at most local nurseries or garden shops. After starting 1-3, and three, Ashland Legion Baseball entered a crucial second week of the season, and they came up with a big win. Here are the highlights from this past week. On Friday, June 26th, 1-3 and three Ashland took on 4-1 and one Hudson. The Hudson bats got going in the top of the third. Leg lift and the pitch. And this is a liner in the center field. That'll drop down. One run being waved around. The second runner will be held up. It'll be first and third. And one run in for Hudson on the single. Holler with the leg lift and the pitch. And this is a little rope in the center. That drops down. One run in to score. Second run is going to be held up. And it will be runners on first and third with a third run in for post 100. Wind up and the pitch on the ground up the middle and it is picked up and bobbled by the second baseman. Another run in to score as Wolf could not get a grip on it. Holler delivers. And this is a liner past the dive of Wolf in the right field. A fifth run in for Hudson. An RBI single. Hudson leading 6 0 in the bottom of the sixth. Ashland cuts the lead. This is a liner in a center field. That'll drop down one run in. Second run being waved around. They're going to try to score a third. Nope, now he holds them up. And it is a two out, a two run base hit for Thurber to the set. This takes a couple hops off the infield grass. Glove by the shortstop, throw to first. And they will get the out, but a run is in to score. Mitch Porter comes around on the RBI sacrifice ground out. An arrow to the set. And this is a little chop in the center, and it'll drop in a shallow center. And a fourth post 77 is around to score. Thurber comes around on the RBI single by Mike Messier. Bottom of the seventh, last chance for Ashland. Bonick to the set. Hit in the air towards left field, back towards the wall, and that'll drop in front of the wall. Runner being waved around. He, Porter is going to come around to score. It's six to five. An RBI double by Gustafson. Bonick set to deliver. Hit in the air left side, and it looks like it is in foul territory, and it's caught. Tyler Hudson ranging way over to make the catch for the third out of the inning. Ashland lost six to five to Hudson. Ben Palatino went three for four for Hudson and had two runs, a double and two stolen bases, while Mitch Porter went three for four with a run and a stolen base for Ashland. On Monday, June 29th, after getting a win against Medford on the road, two and four Ashland met up with three and oh North Chelmsford at home. On the bottom of the first inning, the Ashland Bats got going. This is hit in the air towards left field and past the reach of Derek Adamson. 
And the runner is going to be stopped at third. It is a double for Porter. Before that, they got a win on Thursdays. This is hit into center field. One run around to score. A second run being waved around. The throw in is going to be cut off by the pitcher. Throw to second, and they will get the hitter. But Mitch Porter credit him with an RBI single, a two RBI single. It's 2 nothing post 77 as both Thurber and Porter come around to score. And this is on the ground, third base side, slow roller, and the third baseman can't pick it up, and a run is in. Bottom of the second, Ashland bats get going once again. Jesse Ashley, the new pitcher out of Chelmsford High, as this is hit in the air towards center field, and it is handled by, by the center fielder. Thurber will tag and score. Sacrifice RBI fly out, and it's 4 0 post 77. Said to deliver to Gustafson, walked his last time up. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball to right field, and it is going to get past the right fielder, Reed Dion. And coming around to score is Nick Porter comes around. Top of the fourth, shortstop Nick Porter perhaps saves a couple runs with some great defensive work. And this is hit. Wow, what a catch. That was heading towards center field and Nick Porter just jumped up and scooped it right out of the air for the second out. Bottom of the fourth, Ashland adds security. Ashley deals. And this is hit to the right side. That'll drop down and a run will score as Thurber comes around. It's 6-1 Ashland. Post 77 gets the job done and captures their first win at home as they take down North Chelmsford 7-1. Nick Porter went 2-3 for three with a sacrifice, a walk, an RBI, and scored two runs. Mitch Porter went 3-3 three for three with a sacrifice and two RBIs. Tom Onzi had a solid start. He pitched five innings plus and gave up one run on four hits while striking out four. Ashland post-77 is now 3-4 and four on the season. You can catch Ashland Legion Baseball broadcasts airing on HCAM TV and also on our website, HCAM.TV. To tell you more about what you can expect coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, July 11th at 1.30 p.m., we bring you Ashland Legion Baseball versus Hudson. On Monday, July 13th at 7 p.m., Helena Leet Pellegrini shares stories of meeting her husband and their life together on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I don't understand, I said, why do you want me to go out with Matt? So I can see you. I have to go out with your roommate for you to see me? And as the brazen hussy I had become, <laughs> I said, speak for yourself, John <laughs> On Tuesday, July 14th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On a new Business Matters on Wednesday, July 15th at 8.30 p.m., Finley Perry discusses how he built his business and what led him to do so. I was always comfortable with a certain kind of clientele and as much as anything, the clientele and the architects and the tradesmen that I've worked with over the years have been the people who've really taught me the business. On Friday, July 17th at 9 p.m., Peter Lagoy discusses his efforts to restore Center Trail, his love of the trail, and how he came to love the outdoors on Meet Your Neighbor. I have uh -huh. really enjoy running. I, it, it allows me to combine the sort of competitive aspect mm -hmm. of things and, and camaraderie that comes with running, mm -hmm. but then also being outside and, and getting out on trails and seeing a chance to get out near wildlife. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, July 19th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from July 13th will air. On HCAM Ed, Hopkins School Class 202 share what it really means to be a superhero. Would you like to have the HCAM Insider newsletter sent to you every week? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. If you do receive it, then please pass it along and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. 
Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at HCAM.TV. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Yeah.